Hello horror fans and welcome back to Jay vs. Horror. I am your host Jay Wall and today guys we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, pets and horror films. Now guys I am a huge animal lover. I spent several years volunteering every weekend at a no kill pit bull shelter and I just have a great love for pets. I don't know. I, I feel like animals are the ones in this world who have everything figured out and humans are the ones who constantly have to question everything and never really truly seem happy with any answer they get. I have to be honest guys, this is one of the toughest lists I've done because I only did a top five for one thing. And for another thing, there are a ton of great pets in horror movies. If you go back and look at some of your favorites of all time, you're going to remember that there was a dog here or there was a cat there in the movie that really added to the overall experience of the film you were watching. So with that being said, guys, make sure you leave us your list in the comments section. Let us know your favorite pets and horror films. I'm sure I missed a ton, and there's going to be some you guys mentioned that I'm like, damn, that should have been on the list. But these are just my personal favorites, and that's all you can really do with a list like this when there's so many possible entries. All right, horror fans, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get started. At number five, I have... Max from the 1993 film Man's Best Friend. It stars Ali Sheedy, Lance Henriksen, and J.D. Daniels. It was released by New Line Cinema on November 19, 1993, and the official tagline was, Nature created him. Science perfected him. But no one can control him. And Max is basically a good boy. I know a lot of people are going to say, Jay, Max is the villain in this. Max isn't really the villain. The people who created him are truly the villains, and Max is just what we call an anti-hero in my opinion, because he is a good pet, he's very lovable, and he's very loyal if you are his master. If you're not, then yeah, he's a problem. <laughs> Max is rescued from a laboratory that does testing on animals by an investigative reporter played by Ali Sheedy who just happens to have a heart. Now it isn't until later that she finds out Max wasn't just an animal that was being tested on, he was being turned into a weapon. So while Max gets up to some malicious behavior including chasing a paper boy, attacking and killing a mugger, and eating a cat, he's still a pretty good boy, he's just misunderstood. At number 4, I have Einstein from Watchers. It's a 1988 science fiction horror film directed by John Hess and starring Corey Haim, Michael Ironside, Barbara Williams, and Layla Stotman. It is loosely based, of course, on the 1987 novel Watchers by Dean Koontz. And here we have another animal that escapes from a research facility. And Einstein has special abilities too, but instead of being super beastly, he's super intelligent. And he also has some psychic ability. You know, I love this story a lot. It's a great 80s film, and it's one that doesn't get mentioned much today. In our story here, Einstein escapes from the research lab, but he has a counterpart, a mutated monster known as the Oxcom, or Outside Experimental Combat Mammal. And they are psychically linked, so this monster starts chasing the dog, trailing him, and Corey Haim discovers the dog, of course. His character of Travis and Einstein become fast friends, and they also become kind of the heroes of this story. We have Michael Ironside playing a psychotic company man. We also have this massive Oxcom monster that's chasing everyone around. But truly the heroes of the story are Travis and his golden retriever Einstein. Great story guys. You know Dean Koontz is a big animal lover too and he writes great animals in a lot of his stories. At number three I have General from Cat's Eye 1985. It's an American anthology horror thriller directed by Louis Teague and written by Stephen King. It comprises three stories, Quitters Inc., The Ledge, and of course, General. The first two are adaptations of short stories in King's 1978 Night Shift collection, and the third is unique to only this film. Now, in Cat's Eye, General is kind of the framing story. He's incidentally in the first two segments, and then he is the star of the third segment. Now, throughout the film, we see these little snippets where we know that General is traveling somewhere. He's trying to get to this little girl played by Drew Barrymore who is kind of subconsciously calling out to him, almost psychically calling out to him to help her. And then once he arrives there, we see why General is so needed. There's a troll 
in the wall that's trying to attack this little girl and general's not having it now the end of the film to me was always a little bit ambiguous because we see that general actually crawls up on top of the little girl and takes some of her breath right and that's kind of the story that her mother and father are telling her earlier in the film that that's an old wives tale about cats is that they steal the breath of children uh, but here we actually see General do it a little bit. So I was a little confused, I would say, by the ending. Like I said, it's a little ambiguous. You wonder why General is actually there. But he's a badass, and he's definitely a great pet. At number two, we have The Cat from Hell from Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. This was an interesting pick. I know some people are going to say, well, that cat is the villain. But it is a pet. It lives in that house. It's a pet of the family or was to some degree he's just getting revenge for the things this horrible family has done right and tales from the dark side the movie is a 1990 american horror anthology film directed by john harrison and based on the anthology television series tales from the dark side the film depicts a kidnapped paper boy who tells three stories of horror to a suburban witch who is preparing to eat him the film is sometimes said to have been intended as creep show three a sequel to George Romero and Stephen King's popular horror anthology Creepshow and Creepshow 2. However, this is not supported by any real evidence. Tom Savini, though, has been quoted as saying that this film is the real Creepshow 3, which could, how, which could be how the rumor started, though he may have just been referring to the similar nature of the movies and the involvement of King and Romero. Now, this story that we're going to talk about, Cat from Hell, was originally going to appear in Creepshow 2, but they scrapped it for budgetary reasons. So, if you ever wondered why there were only three stories in Creepshow 2, it's because this story, The Cat from Hell, was supposed to be in there, but they ran out of money before they could film it. Now, and this is the second tale in Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, and it's from George Romero. He adapts a 1977 Stephen King short story, The Cat from Hell, and we have Drogon played by William Hickey, and he's a wealthy, wheelchair-bound old man who brings in a hitman named Halston, played by David Johansson, for a bizarre hire to kill a black cat. Drogon believes this cat is murderously evil, and he explains that there were three other occupants of this house before the cat arrived. His sister, Amanda, her friend, Carolyn, and the family's butler. Drogon claims that one by one the cat killed the other three people and that he is next because his family pharmaceutical company killed more than 5,000 cats while testing a new drug and he is now convinced that this black cat is here to exact revenge. It's a great story guys and I love this cat. I love the end of this story. It's so disgusting and yet at the same time it is perfect poetic justice. All right, horror fans, we've made it all the way down to number one. And for me, number one is Beast from The Hills Have Eyes. And guys, I chose the 2006 version of this film because for me, I think it's a lot bloodier. And I think the revenge aspect is much more prominent here than it is in the original film. It's an American horror film and, of course, a remake of Wes Craven's 1977 film of the same name. It was written by filmmaking partners Alexandre Aja and Gregory Le Vassier of the French horror film High Tension. It was also directed by Aja and the film starred Aaron Stanford, Kathleen Quinlan, Vanessa Shaw, Emile DeRaven, Dan Bird, and Ted Levine. And it follows a family that is targeted by a group of cannibalistic mutants after their car breaks down in the desert. Now, where does Beast come in? Well, we have two beautiful German shepherds in this film. One is named Beauty and one is named Beast, of course, after the classic fairy tale characters. And when Beauty breaks free and is attacked, Beast is also kind of on his path of vengeance in this film. His mate has been killed. His family has been attacked. And so after all these vicious things happen to the family, we see that Doug sets out on a path to get his daughter back. And of course, Beast is right there with him because he is man's true best friend all right guys that's all we have for this week i just wanted to knock this one out you know it's something i've been thinking about i play with my dog benny all the time and my cat bobby they're both rescues and sometimes they get a little beastie and i get things going in my head thinking about horror films i could put these two in and i know that all you guys 
out there have some great pets too so if you're a horror fan you know that all you need sometimes is a great horror film and a good buddy to watch it with and guys we will talk to you the next time we've got something we're talking about bye